Hi, my name is Robin Wong. In this video, I want to share a few tips on how to get sharp images when you're using very long lenses. Let's do this. I've been getting comments and questions asking me, hey Robin, how do you achieve such sharp and incredible results using very long lenses, the 75-300 or the Olympus 300 Pro plus the MC20 teleconverter? I couldn't get such similar sharp results. What are your secrets? Spoilers alert. There are no secrets. I'm very sorry to disappoint you, but hey, I'm making this video to share everything that I can, everything that I do, my techniques when I'm shooting with long lenses on how to get sharp images. Tip number one, make sure that the firmware for the lens and the camera are both up Dated. I know, I know, it is very easy to just get the new lens they just purchased. You're so excited. Go out with your camera and immediately shoot and you skip the process of updating the firmwares. Now, just spend a few minutes connecting the camera to the computer. Go online, load the Olympus software and just update the firmware and make sure that all the firmwares are the latest ones. This can save you a lot of grief because newer lenses that is released, they may not be fully compatible with the cameras that is released like maybe five years before the lens. I know not all of us own the latest and greatest from Olympus. For example, when Olympus launched a 300mm lens, if you don't update the firmware on your Olympus EM1 or EM5 Mark II, there is no chance of using the image stabilization effectively. It will clash with the body or that autofocus doesn't work very, very well. There will be some minor issues there and here, and it will definitely affect the final outcome of your images. Tip number two, there will be failures. I want you to manage your expectations, especially if you're using such a long lens. For example, the Olympus 300 Pro plus the MC20 teleconverter or the latest 100 to 400 lens. These are insanely long lenses. Any minor shake of movement will be amplified multiple fold, you will definitely feel that it's not easy handling these lenses. Therefore, there will be some chance of failures. I'm not saying that it is the camera or the lens to be blamed. I'm just saying that it's not easy to use long lenses. Of course, you look at my sample photographs, I have a lot of sharp photographs to show. As a photographer, any other photographers will tell you that we only show the best of the best. It all comes down to curation. All my photographs were curated. I'm only showing you my best photographs. Why would I want to show you my failed photographs, my blurred photographs? I am supposed to tell you what the lens and the camera are capable of in my reviews. And the failed photographs are not because of the lens or the camera. It's because of my fault and a lot of other reasons that can happen. For example, the bird decided to turn the head or the wind blew and the branch moved. There are so many reasons that can make the photograph not sharp. Therefore, take more photographs, you will have some failures, you have some keepers. The more photographs you take, the more chance you allow yourself to have higher keeper rate. Tip number three, use anti-shock setting. Shutter vibration is a possible cause of image softness. Shutter vibration happens due to the vibration that is induced by the movement of mechanical shutters that opens and closes in front of the image sensor. I have made a video talking about anti-shock or shutter vibration. I'll put the link up here if you want to check it out. It is important to use anti-shock setting which completely mitigates any shutter vibration issues. This is especially important if you are using long lenses. 
to enable the anti-shock setting, you have to go to the super control panel. You can do that by pressing the OK button. Once you are here, go to the drive mode. It is just next to the image stabilization setting. Go in. The anti-shock setting should be the one that has the diamond shape. Now, this it will show anti-shock setting. It's next to the silent shutter or the normal single shutter drive. So select the anti-shock setting. If you can't see this here, then don't panic. Go to menu under camera menu number two, then you will find the anti-shot or silent shutter setting. Go in, go into anti-shot setting and enable the zero second. Make sure it's zero seconds so that there is no delay when you press the shutter button. Once it is enabled, then it should appear in your super control panel. Here you can select the anti-shot setting. Tip number four, watch your shutter speed. I know that Olympus has incredible 5-axis image stabilization, especially if you use the 300 Pro, you have the 5-axis Sync IS that gives you very powerful stabilization. There is a limit to how much the 5-axis IS or the 5-axis Sync IS can stabilize the camera and the lens. You will have to still watch your minimum shutter speed and make sure it doesn't dip too low. Now, of course, in my reviews, I go to crazy low shutter speeds, such as one over 10 second when I'm using the 300 Pro, or even one over 20 of second. These are dangerous shutter speeds. I'm only proving that the image stabilization can handle hand holding at such very, very slow shutter speeds. But in practical situations, if you're shooting, say, an animal, and even the micro movements on the face is enough to cause the image to be slightly blur. Therefore, you do need to increase the shutter speeds to one of the 60th or one of the 100th, depending on what you are shooting. Sometimes you need even faster shutter speeds if there is movement in the photograph. Now, I'm not saying that the image stabilization is irrelevant. I'm saying that Im image stabilization will be there to boost your confidence in nailing the shot. That's fantastic. But always, always pay attention to your shutter speed. Tip number five. Do not center focus and recompose. I know this is a very popular technique. A lot of people use it because it's so easy to just focus on the main subject and drag it anywhere around the frame to recompose. It is convenient, but at the same time, it is also very dangerous, particularly if you are using very, very long lenses. For example, Olympus 40 to 150, if you're shooting at the long end, 150 mil at wide open f2.8. Any slight shift of the focus plane will result in the image to be out of focus. You can see that the main subject will be slightly soft. If you really care about image sharpness, if you care about critical focus accuracy, do not use center focus and recompose technique. Instead, move the focusing point to exactly where you want it to be. That way, that point that you have pointed, that focusing point will ensure that your main subject will be in critically sharp focus. And finally, tip number six, proper hand-holding technique for long lenses. I'm not here to teach you how to hold your camera or lens. Feel free to explore and discover for yourself what works best for you. Everyone is different. Find the most suitable and comfortable way to hold your camera. However, bear with me. For very, very long lenses like the Olympus 40 to 150 Pro, 300 Pro or the coming 100 to 400 lens, these lenses are longer, larger and definitely heavier than the camera body. A lot of people underestimated the importance of proper hand-holding technique to handle long lenses. It will actually break or make your shot. Proper hand-holding technique will ensure you have much higher keeper rate. Now, this is my suggestion. Feel free to tweak it to your preference. Hold the entire weight of the camera and lens on your left hand. Hold it by the lens, all right? Not the camera, but the lens. Use your left hand, shift the weight to your left hand, and your right hand comes in to support the camera. Gently come in to support the camera without exerting any unnecessary movement or force. This is very important because as you gently press the shutter button, you don't induce 
any unnecessary shake. A lot of people don't do this, they use their right hand and because it's not easy, the weight is on the lens itself, it's a little bit off balance, it is front heavy so it's very difficult to hold everything with your right hand and when your right hand is not comfortable, when it's not relaxed, as you press the shutter button, everything jerks and your shake gets a lot worse. Now, it is very important that you try to shift the weight to your left hand. I know it is not easy. A lot of people, when they first try this method, it's a little bit awkward. Practice makes perfect. Keep trying it, shoot with this combination a lot more, and I'm sure in no time, you'll get used to this technique. That's all I have to share about how to mitigate shake or how to get sharp images when you're using very long lenses. I hope you found some of this sharing useful. If you do, please consider buying me a cup of coffee or you can contribute directly to my PayPal account. I'll put the links in the descriptions below on how you can do that. Any small contribution can help me to continue making videos like this and share it with you guys publishing them right here. If you have enjoyed watching this video, please give me a thumbs up please consider subscribing to this channel if you're not already done so and i'll definitely see you again in the next one until then please go out and take more photographs if you can and always always stay safe and take care bye bye